Hello, welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the Coronavirus Pandemic. I'm Dr. Rich Desai, I'm the Chief Medical Officer at Osmosis. I'm also a Pediatric Infectious Disease Doctor, and I used to work at the CDC in the Division of Viral Diseases doing viral outbreak research. Today I wanted to talk about splitting ventilators. There's this paper that was published back in 2006 that has actually been cited quite a bit recently. It's about taking a single ventilator and splitting it, and they did it at the time to plan for disasters. And of course, right now, uh, we're very much in a disaster time, so this is why it's you know super relevant uh, for today. They basically took something that looks like a T uh, here on the left, and they affixed it to the event. And so you can see how they basically split it out. And this is the technology. This is kind of how it splits one vent into two. Uh, it doesn't look so fancy. And they show a picture here on the left of what at the bottom are lung simulators. They kind of inflate and deflate these things, and it functionally worked. And so this is kind of a cool test of how you could take one vent and inflate four different lungs, essentially. And the way that they did it is they, they basically gave the same pressure and volume to all four, and that was one of the limitations. In fact, you can read here, it says, you know, we did this and we presumed equal lung physiology to all four lung simulators, but of course, in reality, we know that different patients are gonna have different physiology. So fast forward now, it's 2020, and there's a company called Vesper in the crisis of this pandemic that has started printing out or, or producing these Y-shaped devices that you can now affix to a ventilator, and they're sending them out for free. So here's a short video clip from their website that shows kind of how this thing works. This will allow us to expand a single ventilator to deliver um, breathing to four patients simultaneously um, if the patients are relatively well matched with regard to their clinical parameters. So if you're paying attention, that sounds pretty similar to what we saw 14 years ago back in 2006. Four lungs that are artificially inflating and deflating with a Y-shaped or T-shaped uh, device. And again, the catch is here that the uh, lung physiology has to be similar across the patients. Otherwise, uh, this, as it's set up, doesn't work. So a few weeks ago, a, a number of societies got together. You can see the full list of societies, uh, very, very well-known ones and, and ones that are very prestigious, said, essentially, we shouldn't be doing this. We should not use one ventilator for multiple patients. And they had a number of reasons why. And uh, the, the biggest reasons, I think, kind of grouping it together, they list them out, and you should take a read of these reasons here. But they basically say, look, uh, one, you know, it's very unsafe to use a device that is not gonna be specific for each patient. So this idea of kind of uh, all the patients having similar lung physiology, we know that's not true, and therefore it's unsafe to do it this way because we need to make sure the ventilator can be specific to each patient's needs. The other thing they say is, you know, monitoring. How do you monitor multiple patients uh, when you have a single ventilator doing that? And that, you know, that can create lots of problems. They do cite a, a lot of other issues as well. Uh, but those are the two big uh, groups of problems, I would say, is, you know, one is the specificity of the ventilator for the physiology, and the other is making sure that, you know, you can monitor these patients safely. So with that in mind, uh, another paper came out and talks about ventilator splitting with differential driving pressures using standard hospital equipment. Essentially what they're saying is there's a way to uh, jerry-rig or kind of uh, add a, a bit of equipment to these split vents so that you can actually offer different pressures and, and volumes to two different patients. And this is actually one of the big problems that was just raised by all those societies. So let's see how they did that. And so here's a picture of basically what they did. They, they used what's called a Hoffman clamp here to add resistance to one of the two limbs, not the other one. And this is kind of the nuts and bolts of their, of their uh, research. Here's a picture of the mechanical lung that they're actually trying to inflate. And so you can see that this is how they're testing whether the, the change in compliance is truly different across the two lungs. And of course, here's that famous splitter we talked about before. Uh, here they used a 3D printed uh, Y connector, but same ideas as what we saw with the Vesper and what we saw back in 2006. And in short, it worked. They say this is the first paper to describe uh, ventilation splitting in this way that allows real-time adjustment of pressure 
and, uh, and, and volume. And they go on to say that their goal was to prompt discussion and debate. And in fact, it did, right? Yeah, I'm talking about it to you. And they said that there are safety issues to consider. And they actually cite the joint statement that we just looked at uh, about all the problems of doing it this way. Moreover, this isn't in real people, right? Like, this is still all just in a simulated setting. And of course, we don't know if this would work in real people. And that's one of the big concerns still. They also point out that there is FDA approval for emergency use authorization of splitting ventilators. If we know it's unsafe, we know these joint statements are out there about the fact that we shouldn't be doing it, yet the FDA has also said that we can do it uh, given the dire circumstances that we're in in certain hospitals. So it's with that background then that this article was really interesting to me. Vent multiplexers are now getting EUA by the FDA, meaning emergency use authorization has been granted for this new device. Now take a look at some of these uh, points from the article. First off, this thing that we're gonna talk about in just a moment was put together by two Yale students, a physics major and a medical student uh, from Yale. So that alone uh, should pique your interest. What did these two come up with? Well, what this thing is, is vent multiplexer is basically a couple of small valves in one of the limbs of the circuit. And what that allows is then modulation of tidal volumes and flow that are separate between the two limbs. So you can basically treat each individual on this ventilator, so let's say it's split in two, each of those two folks can be given different pressures and volumes based on their individual physiologic needs. Well, that was one of the big problems before, right? So now we can actually use a split ventilator and still give precisely what each patient needs, and those things can be quite different and separate. Now, this last part is what really impressed me. They said that actually Yale New Haven doctors have used this device to ventilate two adult patients with different disease states. So no longer are we talking about simulations or mechanical lungs or bags that kind of open and close. These are real lungs that have been hooked up to this uh, device and have worked. And these two individuals, these two adults that they're referring to, had different disease states. So all of this is actually really, really impressive because up until now it's been a very theoretical game and we've thought you know it doesn't really uh, have any testing in the real world but now we're seeing that this particular device has been and at a prestigious place like Yale and presumably did very well and the FDA approved it. I believe they just got FDA emergency use authorization yesterday which means that they're now kind of free to to go forward and, and ramp up production and you can see they're basically trying to do that uh, to help with any shortfalls in ventilators uh, around the country and around the world. So that brings me to this final document. This is from the U.S. Public Health Service Commission Corps, and there's actually a task force on how to use split ventilators. And if you're at a hospital or at a facility where they're even considering doing this, I strongly suggest you read through this document very carefully. There are a couple of quick things I'll just flag. First, they talk about the importance of making sure that uh, the people that are on the vent all have the same disease so you're not spreading infections. In this case, both folks should have COVID-19. Next, they talk about the importance of not making dramatic changes on the vent when you're in this sort of a shared vent setting and that if you need to make changes on the vent, uh, do them very, very subtly. And kind of related to that point, they say, you know, if you're trying to wean someone off the vent, you should probably put them on their own vent and that the folks that are sharing a vent are folks that are more static or more chronic in their use and aren't really having changes in their needs. So bottom line, when a hospital is in a surge setting where they're really overwhelmed with patients and they don't have enough ventilators, there are FDA approved devices now that can be used. These devices have been used in people and have been effective and can actually help with individual physiology. Having said that, there were lots of concerns put forth by those societies that said, hey, we shouldn't be doing this at all. And of course, there's this guidance that we're getting in terms of if you had to do it, this is how you should do it. So putting all that together, obviously a lot of difficult choices ahead for clinicians who are in these circumstances, but we do have some options and now some uh, devices to look for. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in. Hit the red subscribe button and the bell icon to get daily updates. Check out osmosis.org slash COVID-19 for all of our resources. Remember to help flatten the curve and raise the line. Remember, we're all in this together. Thanks a lot.